So the reason I got into beekeeping was because of my wife. Uh, one night, on a Friday night, she told me that tomorrow, Saturday, I have to go pick up two packages of bees. I didn't know what packages of bees were. So I had to go pick up the packages from the local beekeeper, bring them home, and assemble their hives to give those bees a home. That was about 20 years ago, and ever since then we've kept bees at our house. Some years we have two hives, some years we have six hives, but it's always an adventure with the bees. It's like meditative. You can watch them fly all day, depending on the weather. They're a good barometer to what's going on in the world. Uh, right now we have two hives at our property, and we keep them right on our back porch, which is great because as I sit and have breakfast in the morning, I get you know, watch them fly, I come back for lunch, I can see them flying again, it, it really changed throughout the day. So they're sort of like having uh, goldfish that fly because they're meditative and they're enjoyable to, to be around. So what you, one of the things about beekeeping is the observation of the hives. So since I've got these two packages of bees last April, I've opened the hives up from time to time and gone inside to make sure they're okay. And when I do that, I always wear my protective bee suit, uh, which uh, a lot of people uh, I really like to wear because it protects me and I'm calmer as I'm in the hive uh, working with them. Uh, I can really control my breathing. I'm not too worried about um, them stinging me. But what uh, I did today was uh, I was my last final inspection of the year, so I wanted to make sure they had enough honey. Uh, that there weren't any parasites in the hives, such as hive beetles or ants or something that was bothering them. And so it's really just a quick look to see how they were doing. Uh, so you want to wear your bee uh, protective outfit like I do, then you want to smoke the hive. And basically, smoke, um, what they, no one really knows what it does, but it does sort of have a calming effect on the bees. A lot of people think the bees come back into the hive to protect the hive and they don't fly and sting. And once you can get all that smoke smell on your hands, on your gloves, you sort of become part more of their, at, of their um, atmosphere and not some foreign um, invader. So I always smoke the hives and then I take the sections out like those, super, like those frames and put it back in. So just a quick overall inspection of the hive, the final one of the year. Not good. Put that back in. Uh, what qualities do I think make a good beekeeper? I'd say one of the things about beekeeping is you really, if you're, is you have to be observant of the bees' behavior. If you can spend the time and watch them, you'll learn a lot about them. Uh, you'll learn when they um, are healthy, when they're flying, uh, what, what, what attracts them, the plants that you should plant, uh, the, um, their life cycle. You know, these bees, the working bees, they don't work, live very long, 22 days. Uh, the queen, how they're flying, if they're swarming, if they decide you haven't made them a very good home and they're not there anymore, why did they leave? If you look out your window one day and you see a, what looks like a, a big beard of bees in a, in a shrub, well, that's your bees and they're leaving you. They're going somewhere else because they're not happy with the conditions. So why did that happen? Could be a number of reasons. Uh, the health of the queen, uh, just don't like where you have them. So a swarm, you have to watch out. But I think the qualities that you really have to have are to be able to observe. If you're a good record keeper, that also helps too. But uh, I think when you really handle the bees, when you're in the hive, you really have to con um, control your breathing. You have to be patient. You can't get excited when they fly into your ear uh, or they want to get up your sleeve or they get down into your boot. Uh, you can't go swatting. If you have to leave the hive, walk away, uh, take your time, come back and, and go back to the hive. They can sense when you're afraid because of the way you're breathing. So uh, observing and then uh, learning how to control yourself around the hive when you're inside the hive. What the causes of this colony collapse disorder are, 
I'm not really sure. I'm not an expert in it. I could have read thousands of articles. I've heard hundreds of stories. I just don't know whether it's pesticides, whether it's cell phone, whether it's alien invasions, who knows? But obviously if something has happened to the uh, honeybees and uh, if we lose them all, uh, we'll be in a really bad shape. So I know there's a lot of money looking at what the problem is. I think it's going to be a very political fight. I think it's going to be uh, different corporations involved, such as Monsanto, uh, who, who make some of these different um, pesticides. So I don't know what side they come down on. I just know um, we have to do our best to try to preserve uh, the honeybees.